that was like one of the darkest times, like when I was like 13, 14 and, and like, you know, people are kind of becoming themselves at that point. And then I read this article in the library that said that what your personality is at 15 will be your personality for life. Uh, because I used to eat my lunches in the library just by myself. So I was reading stuff all the time. And then I read this and I went, oh, like I'm so close to 15. If I don't change, this is going to be me forever. And can I imagine my life like not expressing anything to anybody, just like being just shy and introverted and isolated. And I just knew I didn't want that, that that wouldn't have been the happy life for me. And not that there's anything wrong with being shy, like a shy sometimes can be like a superpower. You observe people and you, um, you know, you learn a lot by, by observing. But then I just was like, no, I want to have friends and I want to have fun and be popular. And, and so I was like, oh, well, I better get a move on. And luckily I found those motivational tapes <laughs> and, then, yeah, <laughs> and then they helped me, um, because I thought, I want to be somebody that expresses myself. Like literally you'd look at me uh, and I sometimes see it in my niece now. I think she has a similar thing. Like and it's almost like you wouldn't be able to register anything that's going on. You wouldn't know if I'd had a good day or a bad day. I just it'd just be like no no expression or anything. Um and then I I was like, okay, I'm going to force myself to like come out of my little cocoon or my shell or um whatever the metaphor is and just break out and with the help of those tapes and like it having a strategy and how to do it. What was the strategy? Uh, well, there were all sorts of things, but I remember from that how to win friends and influence people, there was something about talking to five new people every day. And so that was one of the first things I did and like talking to girls on the bus or just, you know, walking up through the school gates and talk, just talking to the person next to me and saying hi and what you realize is that there's other people as lonely and as isolated as what you are. And that might have been the highlight of their day to speak to somebody new. And, you know, instead of just sitting in the library all day waiting for friends to find me, which they never would, why don't I actively go out and join like sp other sport teams or other clubs at the school and like actively try to make friends? Like it's not just going to happen if you're just doing nothing. Um, so there were these little tips and strategies, um, but one of which was to get attention, which was to be essentially to be naughty, to get attention. It's kind of like that, uh, you know, Eminem, the rapper, if he hadn't have put out all these songs that were like really controversial and had, you know, outrageous things in them, would he have been a successful rapper? Probably not. And so it was kind of like I then had to do some dodgy things at school to get known, to get like a reputation, mm -hmm. which was against my natural personality because I was such a good little girl. Um, but I had to do things, outrageous things to get attention. And then that led to popularity. And then once you have the popularity, you don't need to do that stuff. But yeah. Is, is there some kind of a link there between you the career you would then pursue as an actress, as a performer, um, a comedian, all of those things, and this sort of early desire to have attention and validation from, you know, your peers. Well, I think it started from just <laughs> like a more normal thing about wanting to have friends mm -hmm. and wanting to be invited to some parties. And um, so it, it started... It started from that and and like and then you wanted to be respected, but then to be respected, people first have to know who you are. And so sometimes you have to do that attention seeking behavior to get that. Um, but but the uh, how I got into like acting was really, well, my mum dragged me into it because um, I mean, the studies on the creative arts can really help your self-esteem and self-confidence. It's like insane. Like it's really good for young people who are struggling. And my mum could see me like struggling and having no friends. And so mum takes me to these drama classes at this community centre and literally has to drag me out of the car. I'm holding onto the car door with my fingernails, <laughs> like going, no, 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 I don't want to go. It's so traumatic. But she was doing it not because she wanted me to become an actor. Like we don't have any 
professional entertainers in the family, like, you know, uh, nobody I know was in the business or whatever. At that point, it was more to help my self-confidence and self-esteem through the creative arts. And weirdly, it really did because when you're shy like I was, to play different characters, it's like an escape because it's not really me. It's a different character. And and then you can perform as that person. And then eventually some of that confidence starts coming to you, the real you, um, uh, from from doing that. But obviously at the time nobody thought I would become a professional actress or they would have laughed about, mm. <laughs> about that scenario. It's it's interesting because you can see these different drives forming within you. You've got this drive for, um, I don't know, you might say for validation externally, but then mm. because you come from a family that didn't have money, there's also where you were rewarded for academic success or being successful at something. There's also this drive to be successful, which shows up in early in your story when you start selling things and buying things, and then you do exceptionally well in school. Um, you go off to board boarding school at sort of 16 years old. Mm. I think in part it sounds like to escape from the childhood, the household dynamics of your father and your mother. Yeah. Um, you do exceptionally well there as well. Exceptionally well. And then you end up in Africa, South yeah, Africa. I know. Which is it was like a, random. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people do the gap year yeah, yeah, yeah. thing and... I mean, it's random, but basically I was a witness in a major crime squad investigation when I was in my final year of school. I witnessed something and had to testify. And then uh, through that, some people were very impressed with my ability to go and do that in, in a case. And so I was like, and and they told me about this program that was, uh, it's a rotary program and it was called a Youth Ambassador um, Program. And basically... They wanted young people who were very good at public speaking. And by this point, I'd done, I'd forced myself to do debating and public speaking and I had to get over my shyness. And so I was quite a good speaker. And and I got recommended into this program and got selected. And you don't get to choose what country you go to. They they just select for you. So and they sent one boy and one girl from our district over um, to different countries. And I got given South Africa. And I was like, cool, cool, because I thought it was going to be like The Lion King the first, <laughs> which was one of my favorite movies. And then I go rock up to South Africa a few years post-apartheid and it was so different to Australia. Like Australia is very safe. <laughs> Johannesburg had the highest uh, rape and murder rate in the world at that time. And there were guns everywhere and barbed wire fences and, you know, attack dogs. And it was like, it was so eye-opening, but then to also uh, be constantly aware of the violence and, like, I had to carry a little, like, a wooden baton, like what you see, like, an old, you know, policeman in a cartoon would would carry because I literally, if somebody attacked me, I'd have to hit them on the head with it. And it was like, I was like, this is crazy. Like, there was there was so much going on that year um, and but that's how I got the malaria, uh, which forced me to have this vision that I was to become an actress. And I think if I'd never, ever gone to Africa, I never would have had that life-changing vision. And I probably just would have gone back to law school and and been, uh, been a lawyer in, in Australia. 